In today's video, I'll show you my recommendations for the best Premiere Pro sequence and export settings for Instagram videos. We're going to look at Instagram Stories, Instagram Reels and Instagram Videos, a recent combination of IGTV and Speed Videos. Keep in mind that the recommendations in this video work well at the moment of releasing this video. But if something important will change in the future, I'll try to update this in a pinned comment of this video. Let's get it started by mentioning that if you record videos for Instagram only, then I would recommend to record them vertically. And of course, that's because Instagram is mainly vertically oriented. Sure, you can watch horizontal Instagram reels by turning your phone 90 degrees. But most viewers are there for some quick vertical swiping experience, so they won't turn their phone unless they are really interested in your content. And also important, if you record vertically, you'll have fewer issues framing the content in post, and you won't lose too much image quality or resolution. So keep in mind during recording that it can be a challenge to cram a horizontal video into a vertical aspect ratio. However, the new Instagram videos format makes it a lot easier to post 16x9 content. But more on that later on, because first a quick shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use Squarespace to create a beautiful and professional looking website. You don't need to have any web design knowledge. You can just start with one of their beautiful templates and they are super easy to adjust to your taste and needs. So whether you want to set up a blog post website, an online portfolio or a webshop to sell your products, you can do it all with Squarespace. Use the link squarespace.com slash Torisium to claim a 10% discount on your first purchase. The links can be found in the video description. So how about the new Instagram videos format? As you might have noticed by this video tab in your profile, Instagram or Meta recently combined IGTV and feed videos into one format, and that's Instagram video. You can now upload videos up to 60 minutes, but only the first minute will be displayed in your Instagram feed. After the first minute, the viewer gets the option to keep watching. This will open up the video in a new player with some more options, and also the option to rotate the video. But to be clear, you don't have to wait a full minute before you can get to this view. At any time during playback in the Instagram feed, you can tap on the video to open it up in the new view. So this way, it's a lot more user-friendly to share 16x9 content on your Instagram feed. However, if your video is 60 seconds or less, then I would still recommend you to upload your video in a 4x5 aspect ratio. And for an Instagram video, this means 1080 by 1350 pixels. A good alternative would be the 1x1 aspect ratio or square format. And that means 1080 by 1080 pixels. But as I mentioned, for Instagram video, you can also go for a 16x9 aspect ratio. And for this one, I would recommend to use a 1920 by 1080p resolution. You also need to keep in mind that there's a maximum file size. Videos that are 10 minutes or less cannot be bigger than 650 megabytes. And the maximum file size for videos up to 60 minutes is 3.6 gigabytes. And then we've got Instagram Stories and Instagram Reels. The recommendation for both of them is a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. And that means a 1080 by 1920 pixels resolution. So in this regard, they're both quite similar, but the difference can be found in length and lifespan. Stories will stay online for 24 hours and Reels will stay unlimited unless you remove them of course. For Instagram Reels you can choose between 15, 30 and 60 seconds of duration. The length of an Instagram story is 15 seconds, but you can also use a longer video and then cut this up into sections of 15 seconds. That's it for resolutions and aspect ratios. Let's keep this all in mind and move over to Premiere to set up our sequence. Inside Premiere you can go to the project panel to create a new sequence. You can then click on this new items icon here on the bottom and then select sequence. Then go to the settings tab and select custom. Time based should be the frame rate of your footage. If you're not sure what the frame rate is, then check this here inside the project panel. In this case, 25. Then we can change the resolution. In this case, I'll go for 1080 by 1350. And as you can see here, that's the 4x5 aspect ratio that I mentioned earlier. We can leave all the other settings on the defaults. If you want, you can change the name here. And after that, we can click OK to create the sequence. OK, sequence created. So now we can drag some files over to the timeline. And as you can see, in this case, Premiere will ask us to change the sequence settings. And that's because these videos have a different resolution than the sequence. But that's exactly what we want. So we click Keep Existing Settings. And next, we could scale and reposition the videos to fill up the entire frame. And as you can see here, if you had recorded vertically, then this would be a lot easier. Okay, so fast forward, I've now added more clips and my project is one minute long. 
And now to export the video, we can go to File and then Export and then select Media. In the window that opens up, I'm going to select the H.264 codec. This is one of the most common video codecs for online videos and will result in a .mp4 file. By default, the option for match source and high bitrate is selected. That's all good, but the only thing that we need to change is here at the bottom, and that's bitrate. If I move this slider, you can see the difference in expected file size here at the bottom. In my experience, you will get the best results if you stick to the following rule. A 15 second video should not be bigger than 15 megabytes. So this generally means that you will end somewhere between 5 and 8 megabits a second. This may sound like a very low bitrate, but that's the way Instagram works. Instagram is definitely not YouTube where you can upload 40 megabits per second on 4K resolution. Anyway, that's it for the settings. We can now click on export and then Premiere will export the video. And after exporting, you will find the video in the folder that you selected, ready to be transferred to your phone and then upload to Instagram. In this table, you can see a summary of everything that we talked about in this video. And again, keep in mind that my recommendations in this video work well at the moment of releasing this video. Instagram is changing and updating a lot of features lately, so maybe this video will be obsolete in two weeks. And that's why I would like to ask you to share your experience in the comments of this video. This way we can all help each other and stay up to date. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if it was, then please like the video. And as always, thanks a lot for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day.